Hey, Joe here. I want to talk a little more about the Presona Studio Live, specifically how to name the channels and also how to use the user fader layer, which are two features I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't aware that you could even do this. And then when I found out, it was like this super awesome extra added bonus. So to do the renaming, there may be a way to do it on the board itself, but it's if, if there is, I don't care. I'm going to show you what I do, which is use the Universal Control software. If you don't have it, it's a free download. Just go to PreSonus' website and search for it. You can find it. Or if you register, then it's all in your account in PreSonus. PreSonus is the only stuff I actually register because then I have all of the details right there in one place and I can download the software needed to run it if you need it. Um, so either way, you can get the software. It's called Universal Control. It runs on your computer and talks to the software or talks to the mixer from the software. It's almost like a doubling, a remote control for the mixer. Anyway, let me show that to you. Here's what it looks like when you open up the universal control. It's very basic. This is the place where you can go check to see if your mixer is up to date. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, there's a new version of universal control and there's an update. I'm not going to update it now <laughs> because I don't need to. Uh, and it'll probably mess things up for me on this video because I need to get this going. But it'll, uh, it'll check your settings. It'll update universal control. It'll also update the firmware on your mixer, which is important if you have this mixer before they release DAW mode, and then when they release DAW mode, this is how you're going to be able to update the mixer so that it will now be a control surface. So it's important to have the software for that, if nothing else. Now, if you want to use it as a more of a controller for your mixer, here's what happens. You click on the mixer at the bottom, and it expands out and shows you, essentially, a digital computer version of your mixer. So you can see I'm talking into channel 7, and we've got all the controls, all the settings, the gate, Everything is here with a visual readout of what you're hearing. Uh, now, why is this useful? Not terribly useful unless you want to use like a touch screen to have added control. But that's not why I use universal control. I use it mainly for the naming functionality. So for me, I've got certain things named. For example, channels one and two I have linked together, and I've named them DAW. So you may have seen on my mixer, it's got this digital what they call a scribble strip which changes depending on what's on that channel. And as you can see, some of my channels are named things like Eureka, ADL, and then some are just called something simple like Channel 4, Channel 3. When you open the mixer out of the box, obviously everything is just called Channel 1, Channel 2, Channel 3, Channel 4. But when you get kind of things situated and figure out what you want to be where, you can open up this software and start renaming things. So the way you do that, let's say we've got uh, kick drum coming in channel 3 because I've got 1 and 2 reserved for my DAW. The way you do that is you select channel 3, then you come up here to the top. This is a little clunky, and they may change this in the future, and you rename it kick. Now, if you were to go look at channel 3 on my mixer, suddenly, automatically, it is called kick. And you can do that throughout the entire mixer and name all of the returns all the channels, whatever you want them to be. And then you can save this as a template or a scene, as they call it. If you've got a certain setup that you use for tracking sessions and another one you use for overdub sessions and things like that, you can save all of that. It'll save your settings, your plugins, your fader levels, and your names all together. Pretty sweet, pretty slick. I'm going to change this back to channel three because I don't need that to be kick drum just yet. Now that takes us over to the bigger thing that I think is super fun with the Studio Live, and that is this fader button. So, or the user section. So, <laughs> I said fader button. That's not what I mean. So, when you get the mixer, the way you're used to looking at it is it's just laid out like a normal mixer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way through. It's just, it's in order, and that's fine. But what if you don't want channel three to be here, and you want a different channel? Now, why would you do that? The main reason is because on this board, not every input has a line input. So I believe the first 12 are mic inputs only, and then 13 through 24 have the combination of line and mic input. Well, I've got external preamps that I want to use. You can see those over here. They are also all presonus, because I'm a sucker for presonus stuff. But I want to use those where I want them in the chain. So, for example, my ADL 700 is plugged into channel 13, the line input, but I might want it to show up here on the third fader. How do I do that? That's where the user layer comes in handy. So if we have it set to inputs, it's just all in order. It's nice to be able to get back there, but I spend most of my time on this layer, which is user, which allows me to put 
any channel on any fader. So you can see I've still got channels one and two here on my first two faders, but then channel three is my voiceover track the voice you're hearing right now. That's actually channel seven, but I've got it on fader three. Then I've got my tape return, which is my playback from iTunes or whatever. And then I've got all my preamps, channels 13 through 17, 11 rack, my main stage rig, it's all coming through right here all together. These can be any channels we want. And then you'll see over here, these channels have the mute button lit up because they haven't been assigned. So if I wanna say, let's say I want this channel to be channel, I don't know, Let's say we want it to be channel four. I come over here. When I, when I hit the select button while we're in the user mode, while this button is selected, I hit select or hold it down, this screen pops up. And I can say, you know what? I want you to be channel four. Boom. And now this is channel four. It's kind of silly because this is also channel four, but you can even do that if you want to be crazy and have everything be one channel just because you're a little weird. That's totally fine too. So that's how you set up the user layer. You can imagine it's going to be completely customized to what you want, but I love that. I can have effects returns over here on the right side. I can have all my main inputs here. I can put vocals on the far left if I want, vocals on the far right. You can move it around however you want without having to crawl around to the back of your mixer and repatch stuff kinda sorta like having a patch bay without needing a patch bay. Hopefully, as you get your mixer and mess around, you'll find the perfect setup. You'll probably spend way too much time rearranging and finding what works, but it's nice to have that option to be able to move some things around if and when you need it.